Welcome to Pete and Hannah's Watch List. I'm your host, Pete Mitchell. I'm here with my great co-host, Hannah. Hello, people. Today, we are here for the AFI Top 100 podcast. And we're at movie number 96. Mm. And that is Do the Right Thing, directed by Spike Lee from 1989. Great, yeah. But before we begin, let us tell the viewers what they should do. Pretty please leave a like and subscribe to our channels and leave a comment down below on what movie you're watching this week. Hit the notification and you'll get great content like this one. If you're listening to Apple or on Spotify, don't forget to like or subscribe and tell us what you think of this episode and you'll get great content like this one. Do the Right Thing was released in June 30th, 1989, mm. and it was selected in the 2007 re revisited AFI Top 100 Awards. Uh, movie number 96, it went for 120 minutes. We watched it on Apple Television, we own a copy of it. Um, it's not streaming on any streaming services at the moment in Australia. Have you seen this before, Hen? No. No, first I time? believe it's also my first Spike Lee I haven't seen. I don't believe I've seen any of his other films. I don't. Yes. You haven't seen? You haven't seen Inside Man with Don Jensen Washington about no. bank robbery? No. That's a banger. Uh, Black Klansman with no, Don Jensen Washington. I never got to see that. That was yeah. the one where Spike. Uh, I've heard about one. that one a lot. Yes, one. of course. Uh, so this one, the elevator pitch for this one is it's on the hottest day of the year. Uh, tensions are rising in at. Fever pitch in Bedford Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn. It centers around uh, many different characters on this one street, um, and the main characters are set in the pizza shop um, owned by Italian Americans, and they have a young um, man working for them called Mookie, who is played by Spike Lee. Yeah. Uh, the Maker Studio uh, was a uh, Universal Studios, and. Oh, yeah, yeah. Originally, this was uh, a Paramount Pictures um, production, uh, but they did not like the ending whatsoever. And okay. yeah, they wanted more Kumbaya at the end. Spike Lee refused yeah. and he took it to Universal. Uh, so Universal was on a good run at the, um, uh, this stage in 1989. Mm. They had Field of Dreams, Parenthood, Sea of Love with the great Al Pacino <laughs> and Back to the Future 2. The story behind Do the Right Thing, uh, it's Do the Right Thing is a phrase that um, Malcolm X used. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And this um, movie was written by Spike Lee. It's his third movie. Spike was a director of music videos, films, short films, yeah. uh, studied at NYU, and then worked his way up and then got to his third movie, which is... He wrote this script in two weeks. Um, it was based on an incident, um, uh, Howard Beach, where they yelled that out at the end of this movie. Yes. Um, the budget was six and a half million. Uh, this film um, premiered at Cannes, and a lot of critics um, criticised it because they were saying it would incite um, violence. Oh, okay. So a yes, lot nice. of people were saying to the president of Universal Pictures at the time, um, Pollock, not to release it until the fall because um, summer tensions run high, especially in America. Um, but he was used to uh, controversy. He yeah. had a bodyguard with him 24 hours a day. Wow. Because of he released The Last Temptation of Christ, uh, directed oh, by Martin Scorsese. Okay, yeah. And uh, he got heavily criticised for that. And so he backed Spike and said, we're going to release this movie. And Spike was ever forever grateful because he said to the to the president um, of Universal Pictures, you can move it if you like, you know, like I understand what, why you have to move it. I love it. No. Uh, a couple of uh, things that were happened when this movie was um, being released. Uh, this movie, when there's... Uh, there's a swear word every two minutes. Uh, yeah. Spike wrote his next movie, Mo Better Blues, um, while filming this. So he was filming during the day and writing Mo Better Blues at the time. He uh, also reprised the role of Mookie in 2012, The Red Hook Summer. Oh, yeah. And 
uh, later on in that um, those stories, uh, vampires happen. So this is the same universe. So he's saying there's vampires in this universe. That is incredible. Yeah. I love the turn. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, there is like seventy different artists uh, used in this uh, film. Mm -hmm. And Samuel L. Jackson um, mentions a lot of them when he is giving his um, speech at the start or introducing the yes, radio. Yes, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, what a, like, we'll go through to the cast uh, later, but just an absolute banger cast in this uh, movie. Uh, let's talk about the director, Spike Lee. So yeah. he, um, this is his third film. Um, he's directed such great films as Malcolm X, Black Klansman, Inside Man, 25th Hour, He Got Game. Now, Malcolm X is just an absolute stunning film yeah. starring Denzel Washington. He has uh, a great relationship with Denzel. He, um, They work together on Inside Man. They work mm. together on uh, He Got Game as well. Um, but yeah, what a great director. Uh, writes all his films. He has a, a unique style. Yes, I really liked it when I was watching this film. Yeah, it's it, like it's always um, on your edge of your seat. You, uh, things are getting well, thrown at you. Yeah, and, and he's it, uniquely telling the story from yeah. the perspective he was writing in it. And I like that a lot. You could tell. Uh, he also stars in um, the first few films that he was um, directed, but he's uh, later slowed that sort of down. What, uh, what did you think of his acting in this in this film? Ah, uh, I don't mind it. I mean, I don't find the his character honestly to be that much. Like, I found his acting got a little bit better towards the end of it. I thought he was just he was just a character pulling things along. Yeah. At the start, and then when he like really comes together at the end, I like I still I start to yeah. see it because he really like he really embodies the character and the feelings yeah. of that moment. I don't know. It's well, just... I think he did really well to, like, because he not only wrote this movie, but he also produced it. Yeah. He also directed it. So there's a and lot. And he's acting it. He's got a lot going on. A lot on your plate, but I guess it's great because then he can do it the oh, way he... Oh, I thought, he, I thought his acting was... It's out of all the movies that he um, acted in and directed, and re I thought this is his best acting. I, he might be one of the best uh, director-actors. There's well, not, there's, not, there's not a lot of them that can do both very well. What did you think of Bradley Cooper? I love Bradley Cooper. I think I would, I honestly prefer his directing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love his acting. I just think I prefer his directing because yeah, I think he's a really interesting And director. you've got Clint Eastwood. He was another uh, actor, director. Um, but uh, his, his acting is iconic more than I'd say it's groundbreaking but it's i've got his acting more than his directing even though like i've only seen i yeah. think i've seen one of his works with his um, directing movies and yeah. i just uh yeah no i would choose his acting whereas i think spike Lee really really showcases like just how important yeah he and he was in this movie for sure uh costume design was by ruth carter and ruth carter worked with spike a lot and she won an academy award for her work on black panther i love it yeah no and, Great. Great costume design in this as well. Okay, so let's talk about some of the actors. Uh, okay, so the lead actor, other than Spike, yeah. uh, was Denny Aiello. He um, plays this pizza shop guy, yeah. Sal. He was in Godfather Part 2. Yeah. He was in Once Upon a Time in America, which is a famous yeah, gangster yeah. pick. And he was also in Hudson Hawk. <laughs> is it? Yes, he Wallace. is. That's what I was like. I was like, I've seen this guy in a movie. I've watched way too many times. Yeah. And it was Hudson, Hudson Hawk. <laughs> Originally, he wasn't supposed to be in this movie. Mm. Um, it was supposed to be Robert De Niro. Uh, but Robert oh, De Niro okay. turned it down because he thought he'd played this character too many times. Danny Aiello didn't like this because it was a, a stereotype. But then he had a meeting with Spike and... Oh, um, he went for it. Yeah, no, I. That's interesting. Uh, Ruby D um, plays mother sister. She is um, a great um, actress. Uh, she was in American Gangster. Yeah. Which is one of our favourites. Um, Bill Nunn, which was in New Jack City, he was also the cop in uh, Sister Act. Uh, <laughs> okay, he plays yeah. uh, Radio Rahim. 
Uh, John Turturro plays Sal's son, um, Big Lebowski, Transformers. Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> to every time I see him. Uh, Ozzy Davis, uh, I remember him as a kid from The Client with uh, Susan Sarandon. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, Love that cool. movie. Love that movie. Uh, Gene Carlo Esposito, like he's like a, just a famous yeah, television actor. I love him. Uh, recently he was in Breaking Bad, but he also plays the big bads in... In both The Boys and in... The Mandalorian. Mandalorian. He's both in. Yeah. Uh, great. Fantastic actor. Yeah. As you say, choose the scenery. <laughs> and I love his costume in this. It is a really good... He's, the haircut. And yeah, haircut. Yeah, yeah. glasses. Yeah. Uh, Rosie Perez is in this. Um, White Man Can Jump fame. Yeah. Uh, this is her first film role as well. Oh. Um, she met Spike in a nightclub uh, in LA. Love it. Um, she thought Spike was coming on to her, but he was trying to give her a, a role. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hey, you want to go out? No. Do you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> the great um, Samuel L. Jackson's in this and uh, oh, playing he, uh, radio uh, DJ. He the just love. a small role, and he's, yeah. he bodies so so much greater. Uh, Martin Lawrence is this. This is his yes. first film role as well. He's so young in this. Um, uh, Frankie Faison is also in this. Uh, you might remember from Trading Places. Um, he plays like the janitor. He's in like heaps of different movies yeah. now. Uh, he was one of the three guys on the stoop, and they were like yes, um, yeah, outside yeah. the Korean shop, and they were like just constantly. T they were all ad lib lines that the whole scene of the, those guys were doing, which really works. For yeah, it really works. It's really fun. It's the whole. Yeah. It's also the whole idea of the film having this very yeah. um, uh, realistic, I guess, vibe to the whole, like just you know, natural feeling. Yeah. Uh, reaction to the film at the time. So um, the box office uh, was thirty-seven million dollars, which is pretty successful considering it was a yes. a six million dollar film at the time. Uh, the critics at the time, Roger Ebert loved it. He had tears in his eyes when he first saw this movie. Love he loves a good story. Uh, New York Times called it a big movie and held Spike Lee as the first multi-threat uh, since Woody Allen. Um, but some critics did yeah, say okay. that they thought that this movie was inciting violence. Yeah, I don't think it does that. Uh, Spike Lee later like, talked about it on a podcast and he did not get the criticism at the time. Uh, yeah. Um, awards. Uh, there was two nominations. Um, one nomination was for acting for Danny Aiello, and Spike Lee was nominated for writing. Um, it didn't win any awards. It's It was famously snubbed for Best Picture. Oh. Uh, so let's have a look at the Oscars of that year. Let's do it. Um... Yeah, okay. 1989 is such an interesting year. Great blockbusters. So let's talk about, uh, we'll go um, Daniello first. He lost to Denzel Washington in Glory. Now, I've seen Glory, yeah. and yeah, there was no way he was going to get beat, yeah. beating Denzel. 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 <laughs> um, let's talk about the uh, directing. So Spike could have been up for directing, but he the winner was um, Born on Fourth July, Oliver Stone. Oh, uh, nominees were Crime Misdemeanors, Woody Allen, Dead Poets Society, Peter Weir, Henry oh. V, Kenneth Branagh, and My Left Foot, Jim Sheridan. So, good competition there, actually. Uh, and Best Picture. Okay, so these are the nominees, and see if you can yep. squeeze, um, Tell me. see if you can squeeze, do the right thing into this. Okay. So, My Left Foot, which is about a guy that only has control of uh, one foot, I, I... and that is... Played by Daniel Day Lewis. Then you got ah. Field of Dreams. Then you got Ooh. Dead Poet Society. Then Ooh. you got Born on the Fourth of July and then Driving Miss Daisy. Now, I think this is where it should have been nominated. And this is um, maybe going off early on the hottest take. Uh, but I think this is this is the best picture of that year out of all those pictures. So you just named okay, yeah. you named um, well, I don't think dry, like, Dead Poets Society, yeah. and you named, well, Feel the Dreams is a strange one to be there, because yeah. I love that movie. Really we, successful. We both really love that yeah. movie. It's a brilliant film, but it is a strange film to go, yeah, that's an Academy Award nominee. <laughs> yeah. And for My Left Foot, like, yeah, great. For my Left Foot, why great is acting? it there? Yeah. Great, 
when I hear Daniel Jude Lewis, I'm like, oh, great acting, but the movie's probably yeah. just like, you know. No, no fault of like Jim Sheridan, but like Spike should have been uh, nominated for best director, and uh, yeah, he should have. I don't. I don't he I should have been it. nominated for Best Picture. And I think that that's the win. Now, if you have a look at where Spike was nominated uh, for um, writing, this is where like I a lot of people know. say, okay, he should have won for this. But I believe he should have won for Best Picture. I think This is the true. reason why. Because he was up against Sex, Lies and Videotape by Steven Spoderberg. He was uh-huh. up against Crimes and Misdemeanors by Woody Allen. He was up against Nora Ephron for When Harry Met Sally. Oh. And he was up against Dead Poets Society, Tom Shulman. Dead now, po- Dead oh, Poets Society yeah. won, yeah, yeah. but I think that should have gone to the great Nora, Nora Ephron. <laughs> yeah, that, that screwed up. So I, I think incredible. that should have been um, one best screenplay, and yeah, I think Spike I, should have won for best picture, because he produced after, it. I, know, I, I only know those most of those films from pop culture, really. Yeah. Then, uh, But honestly, like they, I don't think they really... You know, stood the test of time. I don't know. It's just strange. It's still strange to me that a movie called My Left Foot and Field of Dreams, which is a beloved movie. Yeah, for sure. You but know? like, I just don't understand. I don't understand why it's there. Yeah, like this like... movie had something to say, and then in the Oscars that <laughs> year, there was a famous uh, Kim Basinger was introducing the award, and she got in trouble because she said there's five um, good films that have something to say, but the the, the movie that had most to say didn't get nominated and she was inferring to um do the right yeah, thing 100%. and then spike lee later thanked her to say um that was big of her she yeah. even though she got in a lot of trouble yeah no stand up also field of dreams but harry met sally for script and not best picture as well that's so strange i just don't i just don't understand <laughs> that's so weird i just don't understand <laughs> No, that was like the Oscars get it wrong so many times, <laughs> That's and so strange. and like and then they like Black Clansman is a great movie, but you cannot tell me that mm. that movie was better than Do, Do the, the Right, right thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I love Do the Right Things because it's it's a very nuanced film. Yeah, like, it's, like it, yeah, it makes it you won't, think. It and it's just I just love. Um, yeah, no, I just love how this film really builds the, yeah. the movie because a lot of films really struggle with them. Building, yeah, like building the scenery and, it, and aspect. Of, I like a, a lot of criticism about the ending, but I love the ending. Oh well. no, I love the ending. That's the best part. Yeah, because it's just it's yeah. You kind the of, world's not perfect. It doesn't fit into a no, box. and then you just you gotta move on yeah. the next day. You gotta yeah, go. I agree. Uh, the next uh, category that we like to talk about is the reaction to the film. So recently, so uh, Letterbox. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes is 92%. Letterboxd is 4.4. Really high. Yeah, yeah. IMDb, 8.9. And Metascore, Metacritic score, 93. Yeah, yeah. Has anything been written about it recently? Yes. 2019, Richard Brody of The New Yorker wrote a great article um, talking about the enduring legacy yes. of uh, Spike's vision. Yeah. I, was, I read a little bit of this. Yeah. yeah. It's actually... And not only that, in the film... Like, even, uh, so the famous trash can scene where a trash can gets thrown in. Yeah. It's been used in, um, different, like, different shows have spoofed it, like, Boondocks, obviously, and, um, Bob's Burgers even yeah. done something similar to it. Well, that scene with the trash can, a lot of people have, um, talked that, uh, Mookie was actually trying to save the shops. Yeah. Like, like the guy's lives, because he was trying to break it down, like, you, you break the shop, don't break these guys, because those guys were really under attack at that stage. Yeah, so, basically, when a mob is ensuing violence, just, yeah. it doesn't matter wh- why or anything, yeah. they will, it's, it's, we're over, it's overcome with, like, yeah. feelings, and so, they need to get it out, yeah. and he chose, to, he chose to, the direction of where it should go, yeah. and it was really interesting. Uh, hot take. So uh, every week we like to look at our hottest take. We do a segment on movie news every week with uh, clickbait. Uh, this week, my hottest take is this is not even Spike's best movie, even though it should have won Best Picture. Oh, it's not Spike's best. I think Malcolm X is his best movie. Okay, yeah. That was the first movie I ever saw of Spike's. Yeah. Um, when I was um, a teenager... I was going back through Spike's catalogue. I watched Malcolm X first because I knew of Malcolm X. That go, movie goes for three hours. It is fantastic. Yeah. Denzel Washington is amazing. Spike 
plays a part in that movie as well. Yeah. Um, it's just, a, it's so good, that movie. Is it is a, bef a, a, a man before his time making a, a biopic that actually has something to say. It is fantastic. Is and if any of those who haven't seen it, it actually should be on this list. This yeah, AFL I was going to ask, it is, is, this, really... is there any more of his work? Like no, his work on this? this is the only one. This is the only one? Yeah. Interesting. Malcolm X is amazing and Denzel Washington, like, I just do not understand how he didn't win best actor that year. He was incredible. Uh, so that's my hottest take. Uh, let's go over to our usual uh, reviews. Yes. Um, reasons to Hannah. Uh, this movie has a very interesting way of building tension like I've never seen before. Yeah. This film deals with um, the idea of, um, I guess, um, what would you call it? Like um, our, our like racial perception. Yeah, yeah. Like, like just the way like a neighborhood, you know, has so many different people living in it. Yeah. And, but under the surface, all of them have this like seething kind of like hate, but yeah. they don't, they don't, they don't necessarily bring it out every day. Like yeah. they're not going to incite violence. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, living day to day. And then all it takes is just that one moment to completely change. It's how like, He's like, he's got this, this whole street just like on a slow boil. And yes. It's because it's the, hot, it's the, hot, they like even like, yeah. It's the hottest day, and so everyone's emotions are up to the surface. Because you're hot, you're like, oh, I don't want to be here right now. Yeah. And you're just having all these people coming to their worst point in life. Oh, it's so interesting. Yeah. I just, usually I hate, um, so I don't like usually multiple stories. I yeah. don't like, I don't love like, oh, it's one neighborhood coming together. Because I, I like to focus on one character or characters and then build yeah but the way he does it in this film is so it's so good and it really just other reasons um, to see it's got a great soundtrack like oh yeah no the, the i was banging my head a lot the track <laughs> uh, fight the power by public enemy was played at the poignant scene um yes, when radio yes, rahim yes. brings the radio into south pizzeria yeah. wow like i that's always amazing i just i also just love the unique characters yeah. and that they're, they're obviously um picture like uh you know over characterized but you would like in a sense yeah. that he found like that would be people and like it just what a cast like it, they really they really like they do subtle but poignant performances and just absolutely movie. brilliant i just yeah i i don't know i just really like i also love the directing of this movie this... the way um scenes of like um because, you know, some characters are more intimidating. Yeah. And so you will have the camera pan a certain way to really focus on oh. the fact that a character, how people are perceiving that. And it's like, it's something Yeah, subtle. how he shoots the, um, the brownstones, like, from the street view up. And yeah. Like, it's how just he so shoot, clever. Just even, like, certain characters and their conversations, like, it's completely unique to this film. The scene where um, the mayor and uh, mother-sister embrace... Mm -hmm. Like just gives mm -hmm. me it gives me goosebumps just watching that. Yeah. Like she is wailing for Radio Raheem and and, and, the, and the mayor comes across, um, the great Aussie Davis comes across and like those two were actually um Ruby D and Aussie Davis, like they're married in, they were married in real life. That's so sweet. And like that's it. Like it just I was still thinking about it, it just gives me goosebumps. Yeah. It's just Wow. Well, it's yeah, yeah. A brilliant. It's that's brilliant. Uh, reasons not to see, like, we said it before, but, like, if you're looking for a happy ending, if you're looking <laughs> no. for him to hug at the end and just make it all right, like, no. this movie was, like, 30 years ago and it's still uh, not right. Yes, that's the most horrible thing about it is that it still, this kind of thing yeah. still happens. Even though this is a fictionalised version of events, yeah. this exact Well, in the, like, post credit scene, there's, like, a... Yeah, what... The, they're talking about Malcolm X and, um... Well, you know, the King, and then it also names people that uh, history, have lost their life. Like history is right there. We seem yeah. to repeat it, so it's it's very interesting movie. Really. Uh, does this movie deserve to be higher on the list? I'd say yes. Yeah, for sure. I think a hundred percent. I don't know what we're go we're in for, but I could definitely just thought. Yeah, it was for me. I was like, why is like I can see why it's on this list because. Of, uh, like as American culture goes, yeah. it's definitely deserving to be on this list because yeah. it's a it's a great reflection. For sure. 
And now, if they were doing the list, if they were doing the list today, I'd say it's top thirty. Yeah, well, because then when I got to the uh, the climax of this movie, I was like, no, this is a hundred percent. This is yeah. how well done this movie is. Yeah, it's before it's time. Yeah, so, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, would you buy it on Blu-ray? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Uh, would you watch this again? Hundred. You know what? Yeah, yeah, I actually would. I would. I. I yeah. I'd love to, dude. I, I, I'd love to. Uh, rating for this movie, I would say, uh, I would say it's a banger. I'd say it's a banger too. I, I like, I just watching it. I, I really love every, I, like the directing. Yeah. I really love the the writing. I, it just goes to show, like when I said this should be best picture, it should have been. Yeah. It, it's no. it is like it. I don't think. The writing's perfect. I don't think the directing's perfect, but no, as I, a as a whole picture, it works really it well works. together. It yeah, works. no, you you can't pick things out. Yeah, it, it works together. One hundred percent. And uh, yeah, you know, it's a real. Yeah, it is a really great best. It's what, a, it should have been a best. Like when you when I said to you, okay, last week when I said, oh, next is do the right thing. What, what were you like? Uh, expectations uh, of it. I had no idea. All I knew is that Samuel Jackson was in it. That's, yeah. That's all I knew. And yeah. Spike Lee, which I hadn't... My perception, the only things I've heard about Spike Lee were that he sits on the sidelines of basketball courts yeah. that, and watches yeah. basketball. Well, if you love this movie, you, you, I think you'd love a lot of other Spikes uh, watching. Yeah. So, yeah, get watching him. Yeah. <laughs> Spike Lee. Uh, so that is it for Do the Right Thing number 96, and we say it's a definite watch again. And rating for this one is a banger, which is four stars on the Pete and Hannah's watch list. Uh, next week is The Last Picture Show, which is um, Peter Bogdanovich. Yeah. Uh, you can get that on Apple TV as well. Uh, leave the feedback, good and bad, and we'll read the best ones on the show. Uh, last week, some of the feedback was negative about my takes on Blade Runner. Uh, uh, yeah, it happened. So, you know, I was Thank you, prepared. society. A lot, of, a lot of people said, uh, yeah, we agree with Hannah and not so Pete. So, yes. they didn't find it boring yes. like I did. So, I'm sorry about my opinions. Uh, I'll keep them to myself in future. Oh, wait, I do a no, new, no, no, no. new podcast. No, 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 because society will come back at me one day. Yeah. Um, that is it for the show today. Don't forget that we have a lot of content on the channel at the moment. Yes. Uh, we have the Christmas draft, which we did yes. with Danny and Bonnie, which was, um, some, yeah, some nice messages about that. Um, we'll start voting this week, um, for the winner of the Christmas draft. Uh, you can catch that on Apple podcast, also on YouTube, you can listen to as well. And then on Spotify, um, we've got today. AFI next mm -hmm. week is um, last pitch show. Uh, this week we have the first annual watches, watches. which drops excited. this Wednesday. Then we'll uh, do a special edition of movie uh, What's Next, which will um, wrap up like, wrap up for Boxing Day movies, mm. which is the busiest busiest day in Australian cinema. Yes, and then we'll have a special Friday edition of movie news, which will preview the next week's movies. Yep. and then we'll have the usual blockbuster. Um, you know, back yeah. to 2016 uh, championship belt holder, Henna. Thank you oh. for joining us thank today. I um, really appreciate it. Um, until next week when we watch the last picture show, mm -hmm. you can watch it at home if you'd like before watching the podcast. It's bye for now. Bye. <laughs>